Hey, what's up YouTube? Bill Faulkner with Faulkner Custom Rods. Had something super exciting today. Just got into the shop the brand new Fuji LKW uh, style double foot stripping guides. Um, these particular ones are with the corrosion control frame and an alkanite ring. So they are CC LKWAGs. I have them in size 8 to 16 here. And uh, I guess we're going to do an unboxing video because this is the first of these that I've gotten. These are probably among the first of them that have gone out to a consumer. And I am super excited about these guides. If you haven't used many of these guides, it might be very easy to think this is just another KW style guide. Um, but it is not. It's light to medium duty guide and it has... A number of significant upgrades relative to the KW frames, specifically for use as a stripping guide on on freshwater in light inshore and light to medium saltwater rod applications. So I'm gonna take a couple of pictures, I'm gonna take a couple of measurements, take a couple of weights, and show you um, some of the features of this guide. This is an amazing, amazing guide, um, and just wanted to. Share the excitement. So here I've got three really similar, um, arguably interchangeable stripping guides. All These are all in size 16. These are all in the corrosion control frame and alkanite rings. So first is the K-Wag, or the CC K-Wag. This is a slope frame K-style um, double foot stripping guide in the tangle free line. You have the very similar CC MNAG, which is the medium duty MN, MN style frame. Uh, it is not a tangle free guide. You can see it does not have the sloped frame. Also double foot for about the same application. And then here's our new, the new CCL KW AG. And my head's kind of spinning. I just literally unboxed these and I'm taking a look at them. There are some significant differences. So first of all, the longer the footprint of the guide on a double foot guide, the more it restricts the action of the rod, the more it's going to serve like a splint and essentially brace and impact the action of the rod. And it's a very minor effect, but everything matters, especially as you get into higher and higher modulus, higher and higher performance. So I just want to show you by reference or by comparison. So this size 16, I can't get it on there, so try to keep it on camera, sorry. It's about 41.41 millimeters in length, the footprint of the KW style. Go to the MN style again, it's still a size 16. And I've got about 34.8 or so in length, so it's shorter. And then now look at this, this is the new LKW style same size 16 frame and I'll, I'll take some pictures so you can see the relative heights sorry i'm trying to get this all on camera without glare only just over 27 millimeters in length so as you can see if i put them side by side a significantly shorter footprint um, we can argue all day long theoretically about the merits of that. I'm telling you, wrap up a rod and bend it and fish it and see the difference. Um, it is not insignificant, especially in a lightweight, high modulus or parabolic action blank. Um, so super excited about that. The other thing that's going on, and I don't know, this is probably hard to see, is there's a ton of engineering that's gone into this frame and into this foot. If you look, besides the short footprint, it's really just as wide as the widest cross section of these, which gives strength and stability. But it's also, it's gonna be really hard to capture on camera. Whereas this guy, it has a slight, if you look at this brush, it's, it's round in cross section and it's like a rod and the guides are gonna sit on that. They have a slight curvature in the way that they're formed for both the KW and the MN. But this LKW has significant curvature. It is clearly, and I don't know if you're able to see that. Get my fingers out of the way. It is clearly effectively designed 
to rest on the rod. And I'll try to get some still photos of this because it may show up better that way. Also, if you can see this, it has a very different kind of knurled or wing shape to the double foot guide side. And it also has an extremely good taper to the point. I don't think these are going to have to be dressed at all. And I use mostly size A thread, sometimes double aught, uh, occasionally B, C, or D, but almost always because I'm trying to minimize weight and because uh, more wraps equals a stronger wrap regardless of the strength of the thread and you get a lot more wraps if you densely pack size A thread than you do with the D. Um, and so a lot of the, the thread won't climb easily on a lot of these guide feet, but I'm guessing from looking at this, it looks like it's going to. Um, the next thing to think about is weight. So we're just going to get our scale here and hopefully you can... This is our size 16. CCK wag weighs 2.60 grams. This is our size 16 MN. Weighs 2.06 grams. And then the new CCLK W only 1.86 grams. That's for a size 16 stripper. That's that's remarkable. And you can see it retains the tangle free frame and the sloped ring just the much shorter footprint, the much lighter weight. It's interesting if you compare, it is not a lightweight, it's a beefy guide and has some of the some of the enhanced newer geometry on the slope of the shoulder to make them stronger, more torsion and crush resistant. I mean, it really has the feel and appearance of a very uh, durable, significant guide, but lighter weight and a much shorter footprint. Super excited to get these into action. So I'll take a couple more couple more photos and try to share with you uh, the differences in these and then we'll um, we'll wrap it up All right, so I was doing a little math while we were off camera there. Hopefully those photos are kind of hard to capture and I'm not a great photographer. Hopefully those photos help you get an idea of um, the, the engineering that's gone into this new LKW and it's pretty impressive. Um, and again, I have not had them on a rod. I've not fished them on the water and that will be the ultimate test, time will tell. But based on my history with Fuji and the quality of their products, um, and the observable, measurable improvements in this guide relative to some of the others that I've used for years and really like, I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited about it. Um, to put some numbers to it, when we looked at the overall length measurement, this new LKW is uh, about 35% shorter footprint. So one end of the foot to the other end of the other foot, about 35% shorter than the KW and about 22% shorter than the NM in the same size in the 16s. And that may vary a little bit frame to frame, but but I doubt it because Fuji is so consistent in their production and quality control. Uh, from a weight standpoint, the LKW is 28% lighter than the KW, which is shocking to me, and 10% lighter than the uh, MN. And these are great guides that are really high performers, right? Um, and again, all these numbers, all these measurements are specifically in the corrosion control silver frame with alkanite rings. Uh, the, the just, if we were using titanium frames, they'd obviously be lighter, right? Although I believe the dimensions would be spot on exactly the same. Uh, if we were using phase light rings, that'd be heavier, right? So, um, know that I'm comparing, deliberately comparing guide to guide to guide in the same line and the same finish and the same ring. So we get kind of a, a relative comparison. Um, while we're on the topic, one of the things I just want to spend a little bit of time on, um, and, and the point of this is not to be provocative, but to hopefully educate and, and stimulate your thinking and, and maybe we can become slightly better consumers out there. But this is a great example of, I get accused sometimes of being a huge Fuji fanboy. And I've had people go so far as to say, well, you're just a paid chill of Fuji. They're paying you. They're giving you stuff. They're not. Um, I don't work for them. They don't pay me anything. 
uh, they make the best, highest quality product in the world, period. And, and I, I tell people that and they, you know, that's fine. We all have bias and I probably have some too. Um, but, but let's get into the numbers a little bit and show you what I'm talking about. So I have a, just a reloading scale here and I'm just going to turn it on. And I have right here the first four, maybe the first four CCLK wags in size 16 that have been shipped to anybody. As soon as they announced them, I ordered them. Uh, and they, they just came in yesterday. So I, you literally saw me unbox these in the first video. So I haven't hand selected these. I haven't done anything to manipulate this sample. 1.86, right between 1.86 and 1.87. So 1.87 grams, right between 1.86 and 1.87. So I'm gonna move him again, and you can see this, I'm not altering anything. 1 1.87. 1.87. 1.87. 1.87. So four guides in a size 16, which is a fairly middle of the road, larger size guide, zero variation. There's also across all of these, whether it's the MN, the KW, the LKW, zero observable difference in color or the degree of matte or shine of the finish, the color of the guide rings, anything. They are literally, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. I could, I could weigh a hundred of these and they'd all come out exactly the same. I can measure them. They're all the same. Such is Fuji's quality control. To me, that is really good quality control. If we consider that the engineers specifically designed the guide, to have a combination of properties, which include the length of the footprint, the height of the guide, the depth that the ring is pressed, um, the weight of the guide. And when they are able to produce them in bulk with no variation, that means no defect. That means extremely good quality control. By comparison, and I'm not gonna name names, and my point is not to bash anybody. Here's some very popular guides, okay? from another manufacturer. These are sold as size five guides, 0.15 grams, 0.23 grams, 0.23 grams, 0.22 grams. Now I weighed the oh, with two one, sorry that moved. Let's try it again. I'm gonna try to put them on the exact same spot on the scale, 0.21. These are the same size 0.24, the same ring, the same frame that came in the same prepackaged set, 0.15. These have not been altered, they have not been modified, 0.24. Now, keep in mind that this is a much, much smaller guide than a size 16, and they exhibit measurably. You can get a scale and do this. I'm not making this up. I didn't select these or select the Fujis. Uh, I'll, here, I'll prove the point. Here's four... LKW12, CCLK WAG 12s, and these, these are sealed from Fuji. I have not even opened these. We're gonna open them right now on camera. So I certainly haven't gone through, have sorted through a hundred guides and picked four that are the same weight, but watch this. I don't know how much these are gonna weigh, but they're all gonna weigh the same. So in a size 12, it's 1.01, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.00, 1.
depth to seat the guides that gives you maximum strength and durability. And any variation from that is a defect. Here's some more guides. These are actually very high-end titanium guides. And while they don't exhibit the same weight variation, there's a huge variation in the length of the feet and in the depth that the guides are, the rings are pressed in. And I can have observable differences in frame color and ring color. Um, is anybody going to notice that besides a custom rod builder that's looking at a pile of guides on the bench at the same time? Maybe not. But the reality is those cosmetic differences, those weight observable measurable differences manifest as defects in the quality and the performance of the product over time. And so if I'm going to put all the work into it, I want this product that exhibits no variation, measurable or observable or any kind across hundreds of guides again and again and again and again. That's what I want to stake my reputation on as a rod builder, and that's the kind of performance I want out of my rods. So, again, not trying to bash anybody, not trying to say it, it, all of these products are, are good enough for most of what we do in rod building and in fishing. But if you want to get really serious about what quality is and how you measure and observe quality, get a scale, get a set of calipers, and uh, do a little work. You can take guides in your shop and find and observe the exact same things I've just shown you. This isn't a specially selected sample size. Um, and so, you know, for me, I want to make sure that I'm using my money wisely. I'm getting a very predictable outcome and the highest possible quality for the price point I can get. And consistently, by the scale, by the calipers, by my eyes, perhaps there's bias there, Fuji consistently delivers. And that's why I'm such a big fan of Fuji. And what I'm telling you, we've talked about guides today, and certainly they're a heavily engineered part of your, you know, tackle system. The same is true for fishing line. The same is true for rod blanks. The same is true for real seats. Um, I think sometimes we get caught up in the marketing and the way things look and everything else. Critically look at your components and what you'll find with your Fuji components and with a lot of other components too. Alps makes awesome components. Um, you will not be able to measure or observe a variation in any way across 50 real seats, 50 hoods, 50 fighting butts, whatever component it is, that's what you're looking for. When you consider that variation is defect, the manufacturers that are minimizing variations and producing an extremely consistent product, which I find Fuji to do with all of their products all the time, that's why I'm a fan. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and, and maybe some of you even learned something. Uh, I'd encourage you to, you know, do your own tests, your own measurements, and uh, come to your own conclusions. But since I've been asked, that's why I'm such a fan. So anyway, appreciate you tuning in and watching. Uh, I'll try to get some photos out there on Insta or something once I get the, some rods built up with these uh, exciting new LKWs. Um, until then, if you would please like and subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. It helps me produce this content and bring it to you. As always, if you have videos you'd like to see um, about rod building, about tackle craft, about whatever, uh, let me know and I'd be happy to try to help. And until the next time, tight lines.